Hi, my rays of light. Welcome back to my channel. This is Psychic Medium Raymond Guzman, and today I'm going to be doing a celebrity psychic reading on our mediumship reading, also on Pamela Col Coleman Smith, uh, known as her nickname Pixie. She is the artist and illustrator of the Writer Weight Tarot deck. Um, and so there's been a lot of requests for me to do this. Um, I'm going to give you a little backstory um, to who she is. Like I said, she's an artist and illustrator. She worked with uh, the guy Wait on creating this tarot deck. Um, and this was back in the eight, late 1800s, I believe. Uh, and she died in the 1900s. But um, she uh, was born in England and then came to America to New York in specific to learn at the age of 15 very young uh, about art and she studied at one of the top universities or you know art schools there uh, learning a lot about you know art and and after you know some time there uh, her mom ended up passing and then her father and she moved back to England uh, and spent her life there where she died uh, in England. So uh, that's the backstory from about her. I'm going to give you what I see about her and um, exactly, you know, what is coming through from spirit. Um, immediately when I get into her soul, what I get from her is that she was somebody that was very mystical and she was actually referred to as a mystic in many ways. So was she a witch? <laughs> I'm just going to start the reading off like this and say, yes, she was, you know, she's somebody that was very powerful, had a lot of ancestral protection and her life path here, um, was not only to, uh, bring art to life, but also she was a medium. And I think a lot of people don't know that about her or some people do. Um, when I look at this photograph, if I I can see faces um, through my third eye uh, when I tune into photographs. I can see images of spirits that are around. Uh, in this case, there's a lot of spirits around her. I can also see spirits in actual photographs, like in the background. Like on this one, if you look to the upper left-hand corner of this photograph, there is an image of an older looks like an older man with a long beard he's kind of bald and he had uh darker hair he's on the upper left hand corner and then there's a face of like it looks like almost like another old man he had big white eyes and um also like long facial hair and he's on the right hand side of her towards the upper right hand side you can see the nose and the eyes and some of the facial structures uh but she had a lot of people there's also a female right over her left shoulder on the left side as well so these are this is what i'm talking about in in photographs spirits if you really zoom in and you look a lot of these uh older photographs will have spirits around her uh, if you're a medium they sometimes will come uh, a little bit more on the photographs and appear um but she definitely was a medium in psychic as well uh even though she may not have known this or had referred to herself as that uh, i also get immediately that when at a very young early age she took an interest into the occult uh and being in new york that was kind of emphasized a lot more and then that opened her up a little bit more when she returned to England. So she definitely was someone that was practicing. Her mother it was Jamaican and her father was English, I believe. And so she had the mixture in her blood, you know, that because uh, Jamaicans are very much into uh, magic, you know, or they know about magic and they know about, you know, and so is the Euro European people, you know, when in this time period, this was like the time period of a resurgence within the occult. There was a lot of historical figures that were kind of barely like fascinated they were fascinated by this they were intrigued um and so it was like a new movement but a lot of people had had experiences early on you have to understand that before the sylvia browns before the the miss cleos before the you know the other you know famous psychic mediums of today uh there were a lot before the fox sisters even though you know they were uh whatever you know happened with them people have called them frauds, whatever. Um, 
before all of them, they were there was a lot of mediums in the 1800s and um, that didn't really know that there were mediums, but they had experiences and they were very drawn to spiritual things. So uh, Pamela Coleman Smith was definitely into some stuff. I'm going to say that she was definitely into some magical stuff, exploring her witchy side. And I feel like she actually opened up doors that she could not close. And uh, this happened would have happened. I feel like during the time that she was illustrating the Rider Waite, um, the weight, I'm going to call it the weight tarot deck, even though it's the Rider Waite, uh, because it was later named that. But um, there was definitely a lot of experiences that she would have had while creating that. That's what I'm getting from her soul. She had a lot of paranormal experiences, um, and a lot of people. I feel like she could see the future as well, and a lot of people would have known that she had this ability uh, if they were around her quite often. You know, I feel like there was a lot of what I'm getting is there would have been a lot of weird occurrences and things that would have been happening in in that room. You know, wherever she was, like lights flickering. Uh, you know, the um, not electrical, but like you know, back then at nighttime, like the candle flames. You know, they would go off off and on or you know, things in, in the objects in the surrounding areas would go off. Um, so I'm getting that she had a lot of, you know, paranormal activity, a lot of spiritual visitations. Um, and I do feel like she felt very alone and kind of coped with that with uh, sort of like a sense of humor, but it was kind of twisted at times. Uh, but this was her personality and very vulnerable, I feel like once she lost both parents at a very, very young age, you know, it was kind of she felt alone, but she always was very into her art, and her art was like, it brought her life, and uh, it gave her a lot of um, passion to continue on her efforts, uh, you know, on bringing you know, f a form of art into the world, which is, again, a form of entertainment. It's a form of creativity. And it inspires a lot of people. And being that she was the f a female, you know, in the early 1900s and people, you know, saw her art and everything. It's like this is exactly what, you know, future generations, what I'm getting from her is that she's very proud of the fact that, you know, her artwork is there and people are using it to till today. Like all the designs on the Rider Waite Tarot. Deck. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, <laughs> I'm very bad at pronouncing names. I apologize in advance. But uh, the Rider Waite Tarot deck, if you look at the images and the illustrations, these were all from her. She she did them. But um, what I'm getting from her, there was a lot of speculation whether or not um, the weight was giving her instructions on how to draw because uh, supposedly she was commissioned or, you know, hired to illustrate these tarot decks. And she did it within a span of a few months. And she finished it, but uh, there's a lot of speculation at this point whether she copied some designs from, like, the Marsals or the uh, Hermetic Order. You know, there's a lot of different sources of inspiration where these these images came through. But a lot of people speculate and say that Wait was the one that was um telling her how he wanted each card designed and the minor and major arcana of the tarot deck so what i get from her is she's saying that definitely there was some elements and things that um she didn't agree with with the, the actual um tarot deck the way that the illustrations were she had her own visual concept and how she wanted to uh, create the cards but uh wait actually copied a lot of the styles and designs and drew from different um, different sources and that's how it created they created the um, the Rider Waite tarot deck but the illustrations are not they're like um, bits and pieces of other illustrations that are out there or that were out there at that one time so I'm not saying that she you know um, copied someone entirely there was some elements of it that ch were changed but i feel like the original sketches and stuff that she would have had for these uh the rough sketches were not nothing like the rider weight tarot deck they would have been different and in fact she's saying that she was going to do a 
two decks. So there was going to be another deck, but it never came to it never came uh, to fruition um, because again she was getting a lot of paranormal experiences, having a lot of things. I feel like with these decks when she created them. Um, during the whole time, she experienced some paranormal things and opened up some doors. Um, because back then, this is a time period that you have to understand that a lot of people were doing things a little different than what we do today uh, and didn't really know how to protect themselves. They were just kind of winging it. And um, they would do seances. And I feel like there was seances that she would have participated in as well. And... Again, witchy things that she would have done, whether these were spells, rituals, um, but I do get that she was like definitely <laughs> well versed in all of this. And so, again, I feel like she had an attachment, something that kind of, you know, the things that go bump in the night and kind of really um, scared her to a certain point. Um, and it made her have this turnaround, which she reminds me very much of Doreen Virtue um, in the fact that uh, Pamela, it's known that she had like this um turnaround and became very religious after illustrating these decks um and you know dedicated the rest of her life to helping you know catholic priests and things like that and different organizations so she became very religious after this and kind of turned away from the occult again certain people will turn away when they are feeling like there are there's a, you have to understand again this is the early 1900s late 1800s early 1900s there was a lot of things were different consciousness was way different and fear anything that was fear-based whether it was someone telling her you know um that what she was doing was wrong or this was work of the devil etc a lot of these religious groups in the, in her in particular it would have been the catholicism in uh england um, it kind of, you know, made her aware and scared. And I feel like, she, again, she shifted away from a lot of this. But her life was not perfect. There was a lot of struggles. I do get that she would have had some kind of also um, drug problems. So she was taking some drugs back then. When you say drugs back then, that to them, it was like, you know, apothecary. It was like people would drink morphine or, you know, they would take morphine and they would have access to barbiturates and stuff like that, which is now illegal. But back then in those time periods, it was like home remedy medicines for them. Again, very different time frames, very different type of world. So it's like I'm feeling like I'm telling a story to y'all um, by what I'm getting from her soul and from spirit. Um, so again, I like that I am able to do this for y'all. Um, what I get is that she was not picture perfect happy. She had a lot of ups and downs in her life. She wanted to be successful, but there was a lot of suppression and she never got the accolades that she wanted while she was alive because again, men would have taken precedence over, you know, getting the accolades. Artists, male artists were getting the praise instead of P Pamela Coleman Smith, which is Pixie. I'm going to refer to her as Pixie. Um, so again, there was a lot of worries about money. Um, she wasn't someone that was very, you know, ruthless when it came to money um, or very greedy. She was ambitious and did want to, you know, make a name for herself. But she wants to make it very clear that she was not ambitious like the men were. You know, there was a lot of men that took advantage of her. I also feel she was in love very deeply, but um, she was hurt very deeply as well. And love kind of like evaded her you know she would have been in relationships but there was a lot of emptiness and sorrow and i get a, like a miscarriage with her so i feel like also she had problems conceiving she would have had um a miscarriage there's definitely loss here that i am getting from spirit and from her um and there was a lot of darkness again tied to a bad relationship that really kind of um shook her up and ended up her being lonely and him going for another woman the classic you know unrequited type of love situation um that she would have experienced um but she was a beacon of light and i feel like even though what's really weird is that she supposedly died and she died penniless um and a woman that would have created this deck that is now being monetized by a lot of you know the pe the publishing companies that are selling this these rider weight tarot decks you know she if she would have been alive today she, i mean she would have been like a billionaire or a millionaire you know off of these 
these tarot decks because these were her illustrations and she would have been paid out royalties. But she's saying back then that they didn't pay her what they uh, were they owed her. So she was very reserved in her artwork as well uh, and who she actually would collaborate with because again she did a lot of work she's saying and that a lot of times she was ripped off basically which she wasn't paid for and again um back then things were very different and uh, her health would not have been the greatest i again due to things that she would have been putting in her body uh i feel like there was some problems with her heart uh, with her breathing and I also get the feminine issues as well so she had a culmination of different things um, but you know what I, I'm getting from her is that again the ultimate satisfaction and being proud of the Rider Waite uh, and her you know her name living on through that and people will know that Pamela Coleman Smith was someone that was uh, a pioneer of her time and someone that was uh, multi-dimensional but she really did love God and she really did love um, the uh, occult to a certain point. I feel like she kind of deviated and it was very difficult to her for her to kind of leave the occult things behind any divination because uh, that's what essentially tarot cards are. It's a form of divination um, and, and to kind of, you know, that kind of mesh with her Catholicism roots. Um, it was definitely something that was very hard for her, but... Again, I'm getting that she is is in peace and really and truly, I feel like other people, like she is working with other people that are artists uh, in today's illustrate, in today's world, people that um, are into illustrating and specifically tarot decks and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if people have her come to them in dreams or um, as inspiration for um creating art because again I, I get that her soul would be a soul that would be like a teacher right now helping other people um but she was definitely uh not just an artist she was way more than that i want to refer to her as a gypsy but she she's telling me that she doesn't like being called that but again that's how i would best describe her because mystic people when i say mystic people really wouldn't understand the word mystic or what it means but i get for her she would have been considered like a gypsy, which is someone that is a traveler, someone that likes adventure, spontaneity, someone who is not riddled by the world's um, rules. You know, she was a free spirit in many ways. And, uh, and it was evident in her wardrobe, in her, um, her style of doing art. If you look at this picture, you can tell she's wearing her, a lot of beads, you know, a lot of jewelry, even healing crystal stones I notice around her neck. Um, it was all for a reason, you know, it wasn't part of like a costume for her. It was about protection, spiritual protection. And again, um, spirits that would have not left her in peace, even when she converted to being more religious, there was still a lot of that there. Um, I guess for a lot of people that or wondering, you know, did she, um, why was she, she, why did she die penniless? And the answer to that would be is because she didn't have anybody. She didn't have any family really at the time. And she really didn't have, like I said, people did her wrong and she lost that passion towards the end for art. And because again, they wouldn't pay her. She was, you know, shortchanged and she was just, they took advantage of her, of her beauty and her art. And again, no really solid love. She kind of closed herself off at a certain age before passing uh, on love. And I do feel in many ways that she has reincarnated in our time um, or will be reincarnating. And how am I getting, you know, this information from her soul? Um, it's because when spirit, when we pass and we transition uh, if we do reincarnate, uh, still a piece of that stays etched of our old old soul that is on the other side. It's kind of hard to explain. It stays kind of like programmed on the other side, and it's kind of telling the story. It's kind of reliving those moments, and it's like a record and able to be accessed, kind of like the Akashic records. That's kind of like the same way for souls that have been reincarnated. I'm not 
a hundred percent positive that she's reincarnated but i feel like she has uh or very much well will be but again this is you know the story this is what i get from her soul the part that would be you know still programmed and replaying that record on the other side that is is what i'm getting so um yeah this is this, the the reading for pamela coleman smith known as pixie of the rider weight tarot deck and i also want to make an announcement to a lot of you out there um i am growing my business so um when time comes around like yesterday if you have not followed me on instagram please be sure to do so at psychic medium ray that's my handle it's listed here on the screen uh i am expanding my business now and i have been creating my own jewelry uh and selling it so i will be posting tomorrow uh around 1 p.m central standard time which will be um 2 p.m eastern standard time in the u.s and uh, it would be 11 a.m i believe pacific time so around 1 p.m tomorrow i will be posting on my website under the shop section um new pendants that i have created and they will probably sell out fast so um these are only being sold right now uh here in the u.s so domestic shipping only uh, not international not yet but i will be setting that up as well and i will be sending out you know uh notices or, or talking about it on my youtube videos when i start creating but if you go to my instagram you can see some of the the pendants that i sold and if you go on my website right now there is one pendant that is still has not been sold that i made but some new ones are coming up and i'm going to be posting them on my instagram tonight to give you a preview of what will be available in my shop tomorrow online so woot woot on that i'm very happy um also be sure to pick up a copy an autographed copy of my book starseed footsteps while you're there if you'd like to if not you know um you can pick it up on a non-autographed copy on amazon or barnesandnoble.com most of all again don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner and if you'd like to book a private psychic reading with me you can go to my website it's www.raymondguzman.net forward slash shop blessings and love and light have an amazing day or night wherever you are in the world my rays of light